Hello, I'm Judy Beyer of Rustic and Shine Resin Design. Welcome to my resin room. Today we're going to be working on some pocket hugs. These are a real favorite of mine. They're fun to do and uh, people seem to really love them. They're, they're always unique as are most any resin pours but these ones are just really a lot of fun and a lot of color. So what I'm starting out with is I'm measuring out all of my resin. My resin is Resin Art Flow and this is a two-part resin so I'm mixing equal amounts of both parts, the hardener and the resin together. And as I'm going I am always cleaning my tools and my measuring cups so that I don't have any resin drying on them. Uh, it's super easy to do as you go along instead of trying to clean them later. Uh, that's just my preference. Some people do prefer to clean them after they dry, but this is just uh, the technique that works for me. So keeping things clean and tidy and organized and mixing resin thoroughly. Uh, it needs to be mixed until it's clear, which can take up to five minutes to mix. You just need to really watch it and look at it. That's one of the areas that can be very problematic is if your resin is not mixed thoroughly, you will have funny little things happen when it tries to dry. It either won't dry properly or you may get um, kind of a swirling, kind of strange looking um, finish on it. So mixing is really important. Another thing is making sure your room is a good temperature. Very consistent, that helps with the, the mixing and the setting of the resin. So what I'm doing now, I've mixed it and I'm just putting the clear resin into the hearts. I'm just wanting, I want to fill them, not overfilling them, but to fill them as full as I sort of can, leaving room because at the end I'm going to need to mix a little bit of white resin in. So just keeping uh, mindful about that. So just pouring the resin, trying to be equal throughout each of the hearts and what I'm putting in. It's a little bit of a guessing game and they're, you know, going to be a little bit maybe inconsistent but uh, they'll be full enough that the finished product will be quite nice. So again, just uh, going through, I find um, that having a light over my work area, especially when I'm working with hearts, is really a, a good thing to have because this resin is clear when you put it into your heart mold. It can sometimes be hard to tell exactly how full it is, but with the extra light over my work area, it really does does help out. And I've got a ring light that you can see um, just up in the corner, and that really helps me with seeing my hearts and what's happening with them. So I'm still working on filling them. I'm doing two trays today. I just like to do that many at a time um, for a couple of reasons. One, I'm taking the time to be pouring resin, so I might as well make the most of doing two trays instead of just one. It really takes almost the exact same amount of time to do two trays and that way um, at the end I've got double the amount of hearts. So it's kind of nice and it gives me a lot more flexibility in what I'm doing with my colors. And you'll see I've got colors lined up in front of all my uh, trays there. Those are all my alcohol inks. For my alcohol inks I've ordered them from Amazon. I don't use a particular brand. I find these ones work well for what I'm doing and they come in a pack that's a variety of colors which again for doing hearts it it's it's fun because you can mix and match and do whatever colors you feel will look good together. So that helps with having a lot of variety. And you'll notice I'm just, I've got some little sticks on the edge of my molds under them. That 
is just because sometimes I find that the molds, the resin rolls over to one side of the heart and it's not being a uh, nice smooth um, level amount in the heart so by putting the stick under just the edge of the heart it just makes the resin smooth out evenly in in the heart so I'm just uh, putting in a bit more of the resin topping those up now I do also have uh, some resin that I kept aside in another small container and with that resin what I'm going to be doing here is I'm adding in some mermaid trash foam white this is uh, just a white mixture you can see it's it's quite thin this is what I use in my hearts to drizzle in the hearts to help me get it some people call it a cloud effect, but to me, the end result, it's more of a, um, a ribbony kind of effect. So I have to wait for that to set up more and thicken. So in the meantime, I'm just spraying a little bit of uh, alcohol on my hearts. What that does is it's popping bubbles on the surface. I'm also adding some into my white. It helps to make the white not blob in my heart mold when I put it in. It, it's much clearer and smoother. So now I'm adding in my alcohol inks and like I say you can do any colors that you like together. You can make them all one color. What I'm doing is I'm going to be making these first hearts uh, half of the heart one color and half of the heart another color. And that gives a nice effect after. You'll see when I put the white in and I swirl it a bit, it swirls the two colors amongst the white to just give it a really interesting finish and I'm putting in you know four four or five drops you can put in two or three you can use three or four different colors it's really there's no rules as far as what you do with these hearts this is again just some choices that I made for today I've done many different colors and I've found uh, from people who buy these from me that there is no uh, preferred color. Everybody likes something different. So that's why it's really fun to make all the different shades and colors and mixing different shades of, say, purples together or your, your reds or your greens. It's just, it's just playing with color. So now I'm just going to put some more ink into the second tray here. And I've also been watching my clock from when I first mixed my resin up. I want to watch with this resin. I'm looking at a time of about 20, maybe 25 minutes from when I mixed my resin until I want to put in my white and add that because I want it to be a little thicker so paying attention to your time is really a critical part of making these pocket hugs. And when you see the, the colors together, sometimes like those ones that I just put in with the purples, they look like they could be the same colors but in the finished product you'll see there they aren't the same and they do mix in well and have some variety in there with with the color in the hearts and now I'm doing some orange these ones again I'm doing half of the heart I've just decided to do 
them that way instead um, of doing the whole heart or you can do you know across the top you could do one color and do kind of layers of colors and then I'll be putting in my my last color and that's a yellow yellow and the orange go go nice together when they're uh, swirled and you really you know don't need a lot of lot of color in there it's surprising how far it goes yeah and I decided go back and I'd add some yellow into my green so you know just do what what feels good to you and have fun with it Sometimes it's surprising when you try different colors together what the end product looks like and how good it can be. So doing resin with these hearts, just have fun. Just experiment and see. And I'm just testing my white to see how it's thickening. I've done this many, many times. I can see that it's not as thick as I want it. So it's just a waiting game and while I'm waiting it's it's kind of nice too because what happens with the resin in the heart mold there is the the resin settles and any more bubbles kind of pop up to the surface and so it's it gets rid of the bubbles on its own I don't ever use a torch on my molds I've just found that it's difficult to not melt your mold and I want to use these molds as much as I can just to have you know saving saving on cost so I don't use a torch on these I use my alcohol to spray on there and it works awesome for popping the bubbles um, that are rising up so just mixing and waiting and I'm holding on to the container too. I can also tell by the feel of what comes through on that container as far as the warmth because as the resin thickens it starts to warm up and so that's something else that you know when you've used resin a fair bit you get to to feel that and get to know how your resin behaves so always you know checking that uh, there's a kind of a fine line when it starts to thicken and it's all of a sudden gets too thick and then it won't do what I need it to do so just paying attention no oh, and I have had a little bit of an overflow I overfilled one but you know what it's okay I can still make this work because there are no rules so I'm just drizzling the white over each one of the hearts just wanting it to be, I like it to be quite thin lines so you'll notice it's, it does sink a bit into the rest of the resin which is, is great, you want that to happen uh, that helps with the depth of the, the ribbon look when it's finished and it's just swirling around and there's no specific way to do this. It, it's a lot of just fooling around and um, making each one is going to be unique so drizzling this over the top I, you'll see some of it's you know going outside of the heart mold area that's perfectly fine when the when the resin sets up and you take them out of the out of the mold that can just be either you can cut it off or most times uh, I, what I do is I use a, um, a little piece of sanding paper and I can just sand it off and here I'm just going through the hearts and making my swirls and again this is all freehand just do whatever you like it there's you know you can swirl it around into a circle back and forth everyone is going to be different and what this does is going from one side of the mold to the other is drawing the color so that it goes mixing a bit but it's more of making sort of lines in 
from the one color to the other in amongst with the white. And you'll notice I'm wiping my little stick in between so I'm not mixing the, the purples into the greens, say. So keeping, keeping that clean to keep your colors consistent. Uh, when I'm doing this also, I'm being very careful. I'm not going to the bottom of the mold with my stick because I don't want to scratch my mold. If you scratch your mold, you're going to be taking off some of the finish on it and that's going to shorten the life of your mold. And it's also going to create, for the next time you try to use it, it could have your resin um, attached to your mold and not come out of the mold properly and then your, your mold is pretty much done. So, you know, you want to be aware of taking care of your mold in between. I um, usually give them a light washing just in lukewarm water and a little bit of soap and then drying them. Uh, just, they don't need to be done every time. At the end of this, when the resin is set, you can just peel off the overflow for any of the white or the resin that's come over on the, the one there. So now, basically, that is all that you need to do as far as the pouring portion of making these hearts. These now will set. I like to leave mine for 24 hours. Okay, so now the the hearts have had time to set. I've actually removed them out of the molds and cleaned them up. And you'll see uh, in the picture, these are the, the hearts that are completed um, in the same order as what they were in the molds. What I do with these hearts afterwards is I put them onto these cards that I make and I attach them with a double-sided sticky tape and I package them into a nice little bag and these are the products that uh, I use for my pocket hugs at my sales. Thanks so much for joining me and I hope you have fun with your pocket hug designs.